For GateRoll.net, I'm Chad Colvin. I'm joined by David Reed and Darren Sumner, and we're here today. Hello. Visiting with Mr. Ryan Robbins. Ryan, thank you for taking the time to uh, talk with us today. My pleasure. <laughs> He's over there. Here I am. In my in favorite, favorite coffee, coffee shop. shop. Yes, my favorite coffee shop. Where is it? What is it? It's, uh, it's called Rain City. It's in North Vancouver on the corner of 2nd uh, and Lonsdale. I come here all the time. I love it. And it's yummy. And people come in and out all the time. And, uh, you know, you'll hear nice coffee noises and the shh sounds. And, but it's yummy. And I bet everybody right now is like, if you haven't had your coffee yet, you're like, oh, God, I really want a coffee right Do now. they have chai? <laughs> hmm? Mm. Yeah, they have chai. And they have really good tea here as well. And someone left the door open. Horrible. The only problem. The door's not in the spring here. You know, you get this. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in the business. Uh, was acting the first thing that you wanted to do, or...? Man, you know, it's a good question. And no one ever asked me that question. I, I, I kind of like this story. When I was, um, I'll make it as quick as I can, but when I was 12, uh, we, were, we were about to, we were going to sort of um, check out the junior high we were going to go to the next year, and this, these kids had done this, uh, this sketch, this little play, and, and this one kid in particular just blew my mind. I thought he was so good. I was like, man, I want to do that. And uh, I had all these sort of hopes and, and dreams, all these things I wanted to be when I grew up, firefighter or stuntman or whatever. And I, I quickly realized that if I'm an actor, well, I can do all those things. I could be any number of those things. So uh, that's when I, I really started focusing on it. And then um, I went to a, a high school that had a really progressive arts program. And I had a teacher there uh, named Drew Kemp. And I would turn every scene into a joke that you do when you're a teenager. And I would just, it was this really um, intense acting program that we were meant to take seriously. And I just didn't. I just kind of relied on, like, whatever. I just, like, ah, oh, I can perform. It'd be great. And he literally kicked my butt in a scene. He was so angry with me for not, you know, um, being truthful in the scene with my scene partner that he took over the scene from my scene partner. Mm -hmm. And we actually physically were tearing at each other, and yelling <laughs> and screaming, but staying within the scene. And it was so amazing. The feeling it was so exhilarating and cathartic. I thought, Damn, man, I want to do this. I want to feel like this all the time. And that was sort of the moment. And then I scrambled around doing lots of other things. And you know, I was a circus performer. I was in a band. I did all these things. So I didn't know how to really be an actor, particularly in film and television. And uh, this wonderful filmmaker was a fan of my band and put me in a movie and kind of just went from there. But I, I truthfully started quite late. I didn't get um, my first sort of professional gig until I was about 26. That's considered late? Well, I mean, for me it was, considering <laughs> I wanted to do it when I was 12. And most people that I knew, most of that I know even now, started at young ages, you know, like, um, you know, at least in their teens, you know. And, and part of me wishes that I, I had started younger. Um, but part of me is really glad that I didn't because I don't think I could have handled it then. Right. I was a bit yeah. What was crazy. that? Yeah. What's that? What was the first professional? Um, my very first paid gig was a TV series called Cold Squad. And it was uh, a show shot here in Vancouver. Um, yeah, and I played a character named Chimp. Yeah. <laughs> Chimp. That was my first paid gig. Yeah. It's you've getting, had... getting loud in here. It's a lunch rush. <laughs> uh, you've it's had a good, a good idea, Ryan. Let's do an interview. <laughs> my, this was my, it was my idea to do an interview at a coffee shop, by the way. You've had quite a few other credits within the Vancouver area, too. Twilight Zone and several other. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, lots of stuff. Um, we've been lucky, you know, a lot of stuff shooting here. You know, Twilight Zone was good on Outer Limits, you know. Jeremiah. I mean, there's a, there's a list of really good... It's, it's funny, Vancouver seems to be a... It's like a hotbed of sci-fi here, mm -hmm. you know? So. Are you personally more drawn to the genre stuff uh, itself, well, or do you I'm just a, go where... I'm a bit of a comic book geek, so that's how it started for me. Like, I loved comic books growing up. I still like comic books. And, um, you know, I guess, I, you know, the, the genre is an offshoot of that as far as I'm concerned. I'm definitely inspired by uh, shows and films that have that comic book fantasy edge. Um, but I, I mean, I just love acting, man. I, I like I like the work regardless. If it's an interesting script or an interesting story, 
I'm in, I'm sold. But, uh, you know, I do really enjoy this genre. I think that I have a, I think I have a particular understanding of the genre, which maybe is, maybe that's helpful. Yeah. We'll talk about Atlantis and Blade and Redeem a little bit. Uh, throughout the series, we're never quite sure where his loyalties are. He double-crossed the Atlantis expedition, Polio and Poe. And uh, was he ever loyal? Was he just loyal to himself, or was he doing what he thought was best for the Jedi people? I think the thing with Layden is that he was loyal to his people. I think that it wasn't about you know choosing sides. It was just he just I don't I don't personally I never played him like he was trying to mess with anybody else. I always played him like his priority was his people, that he would just always do what was best uh, for his people, and that you know. And, and whatever happened as an option to that or a consequence, uh, and, and is that he wasn't going to worry about that because he felt his people uh, deserved more, and, and so you know that was and his sister. sister and his sister. Yeah. Well, one of the last times that we see you on screen is the third season. I think it was the return. I think that's the last time we saw you was the return. The return, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was like kind of an alliance that he's kind of sort of built up with the Atlantis expedition at that point. Do you think that's something that he would have held, or do you think if it suited his own purposes, he would have ended up breaking that, like getting down the road? I think, in, in, I mean, in my world, in, in my opinion, I think that he really liked that he would have liked the idea of, of an alliance. I think he understood, um, you know, the potential for an alliance. Uh, what, what he could learn from them. I think that was one thing about Layden that I always thought pretty cool is that he wasn't, you know, where Kolya had it all under control and he was better than or something. I think that with Layden's thing, it was like, he wasn't, he was willing to learn. He wanted to, you know, he wanted to absorb everything he could that would somehow benefit his people, you know, and I think that he appreciated um, those guys for what he could learn from them. And, you know, when you get guys like Ronan, you know, we never really, we never really saw that, 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 that kind of presence and, you know, you know, the kind of, and then Taylor and the kick-ass female, I think those guys had a lot, you know, to offer. But just, a, I think, um, an alliance in general, like, I think he would have upheld it at, until it didn't suit him anymore, any further, <laughs> until he became bored of it. <laughs> <laughs> What are you? Uh, what are your feelings about um, basically the Jedi storyline and Laden in particular about the whole storyline kind of being rough after? What I mean, about, oh, what are my feelings about it, it being dropped? It, it did. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I, it's, it's unfortunate. I thought it was. I thought there was a lot of potential there. Personally, I thought it was really. So you didn't think it ran its course and there were more stories. I didn't there. think it ran its course at all. I mean, I, I know that they had. Uh, you know, I mean, Colia came back from the dead like three times. I, like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, obviously I had run his course, but um, maybe, maybe, maybe Layden had, I don't know, maybe Layden didn't, uh, wasn't enough of a threat, or I thought he was really interesting. Um, I just think that when it came down towards the end, you know, they had, they had developed all these potential enemies, and I think they needed to sort of focus on one, and I think the the most threatening was probably the wraith, and so that's the avenue they they tried to go with. And uh, I myself find personally that the characters that you don't know if you can trust or not usually are the most interesting. I, me too. I mean, I find those interesting as well. I mean, it's like I again going back to comic books. I, I like the I like the antihero. I like the characters that maybe one day they're good, maybe one day they're bad. They kind of have they have their own agenda. You know, I mean, I think like. I find that really, really fascinating. They don't have an allegiance to anyone, and I tried to bring that to Layden. and I tried to bring that to uh, the, the Jedi people so that they could call on us if they needed us, but then we might pop up as, as an enemy, but hey, it's not personal, it's just business.